greatly to be praised. Therefore, this day we thank you and bless your name. May your name be glorified. We exalt your holy name. We reverence you in our midst this day. We bow our knees before your throne this day. And we lift you up high above all and the kings. We give you praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, if you're happy to be here this morning, just shout a big amen. 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 I believe we can shout better. Amen. 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 On behalf of the leadership, I would like to welcome all of us to this morning's service, to everyone in this auditorium, to our brethren joining us live for my new boy town and Michelle come branch. Amen. 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 Beloved, this morning we are blessed by the presence of our papa from Michelle Camp, Reverend Atuese. Let's give a clap of freedom to the Lord. Daddy, you are welcome. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our first offering. I humbly ask that we pick a quality offering and lift it up as we pray. Let's lift up our offerings and pray. Father, Lord, we are thankful to you this morning. Lord, we are grateful for the blessed week you have given us. At this moment, we lift our offerings. We pray that you shall bless these offerings and continue to supply all our needs. We pray that you shall bless everyone who is able to give and even all those who are unable to give so that the next time we meet, they shall have in abundance to give. Thus we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Christo mocha din kuni mama ye mama ye mo se mano oh yesu christo mocha din kuni mama ye mama ye mo se mano oh mo mo se mo mo se mo mo se mo Yes, 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we all happy to be here this morning? Let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Father. Amen. We thank God for yet another opportunity to sit at his feet and to be taught by his word. Right now, by the grace of God, we are streaming live. Michelle Camp is taking in it live. Um, Niboy Town as well. And then the entire world is also worshiping with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God? Let us pray. Lift up your right hand, close your two eyes, and please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, we thank you once again for your grace and for your mercies. We thank you for bringing us to sit at your feet to be taught by your word. Holy Spirit of God, this morning also, grant me to receive knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. My Lord and my God, let the coming of your word uproot every seed of sin in my life. My Lord and my God, let the coming of your word sharpen me and empower me to live according to your word. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, make me perfect for eternal life as I receive your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray, I submit myself before the cross. Touch my lips of clay. Touch my lips with coals of fire and put your word in my mouth. Grant me to receive wisdom to dissect your word without fear or favor. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, O Lord, to see and to hear from your heavenly perspective. That I may not do anything according to the flesh, but according to your Holy Spirit. That your children might be blessed and your name be glorified. Let every spirit of heaviness, every spirit that is from the camp of the enemy, that will try to distort, that will try to create slumber in the eyes of your children, be dealt with in the name of Jesus. Let the atmosphere be conducive for your word. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. amen. Please take your seat in the presence of the Almighty. I want to welcome all of us to this beautiful Sunday morning church service. And I welcome our Niboy Town brethren, the Mishekam brethren, and I also want to acknowledge our online audience for fellowshipping with us this morning. I believe this morning's word will be a blessing to each and every one of us. Amen. But before we get into the word, let me not forget to say a very big thank you to the Almighty for yet another, uh, the white man will say, gargantuan opportunity <laughs> to stand before the altar of God and his holy gathering. I also want to say a very big thank you to the, uh, to the servant of God, Reverend Dr. Edwards, for allowing me to partake in his big shoes. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this is a shoe that demands a lot of anointing. <laughs> Amen. So, um, I thank God for his life. And I also 
acknowledge the leadership of this branch, the resident pastor, Reverend Yemutete, and his beautiful wife, Mama Tete. I also want to acknowledge the leadership, the elders, deacons, and deaconesses, the departmental leaders, and all church workers. And then to the entire church, I acknowledge you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. The title of this morning's sermon is Christian Marriage. Christian Marriage. Christian Marriage. This is the word that the Lord gave to his servant to be shared in Teshi and also for all of us here in Tema, Neboy Town, and Michelle Camp. Christian marriage. As believers, as children of God, it is important that once in a while we remind ourselves concerning the importance of marriage. Not just marriage, but Christian marriage. It is very, very important because it is scripturally proven that marriage was instituted by God. Marriage is not a man-made institution. Hallelujah. Marriage was ordained by God. And God himself officiated the first marriage in the Garden of Eden. So marriage is very important or is very dear to God's heart. And we as Christians must not see marriage as human institution and treat it anyhow. But we must see it as God's institution so that we will um, respect it, honor it to the glory of the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Papa has said many, many, many times that one area that will lead many to hell is marriage. And it's true. It's true, church. It is perfectly true that many will go to hell because of this important institution that God himself has ordained called marriage. And you and I as Christians must know the importance of it so that uh, we honor it to the glory of God. If you believe it, clap your hand for Jesus. Now, when you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, Oh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Before we read, um, let me, forgive me, I want to acknowledge my dear wife, Sarah. Hallelujah. Uh, Sarah, God bless you for being a submissive and a caring wife. Hallelujah. And that, that is my only baby. Amen. That is my baby. Amen. She is my baby. <laughs> and I'm his papa. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What the Bible is saying here, what the Apostle Paul is telling here, or telling us here, is that marriage is to be kept honorable, especially in the fellowship of believers. You and I must not define or treat marriage as the world do or does. Hallelujah. Marriage must be kept honorable in the fellowship of believers. And this Paul counseled, made it known to the church in those days, in the first century apostolic church, that marriage is an institution of God. Marriage was ordained by God. Hallelujah. 
Because in the Bible, God said, For this purpose, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So marriage should be seen as more spiritual than physical. Praise the Lord. One reason why many are not treating marriage well is because they see it more as physical than spiritual. But if you and I want to benefit from the blessing that comes from marriage, then we must begin to look at it from the spiritual point of view. Praise the Lord. That is the only way we can attract the blessings that comes with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9, 7 verse 9, the Bible says, but if, okay, let's read it. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. It is better to marry than to burn. Praise the Lord. It is better to marry than to burn. What is the Bible saying here? The Bible is telling us that or Paul was saying that in the olden days in the olden days or even in our present times they lived they lived in a way that was not pleasing to God. They lived in a way that was not, you know, holy in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the time that they lived in in those days and even in our days, Paul was saying that it was okay for people to remain unmarried. Praise the Lord. But because of something because of immorality, sexual immorality, because of sexual sin, he says, if you cannot control your sexual passions, hallelujah, then marry. Because marriage is sort of, marriage is the antidote for sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. God created marriage as an antidote for sexual, sorry, sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Because God does not want us to go to hell. He does not want us to, to end up in hell. He wants us to be with him in the kingdom of God. And one way that the devil uses to prevent us from participating in the kingdom of God is sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. Sexual immorality is a great sin in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. So Paul said it was best for them to marry so that they will not fall into the temptation of sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as children of God, it is best for us to marry in order not to um, fall into all kinds of sins or immo sexual immorality so that our relationship with God can be perfect, can be solid as he wants it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. And even though marriage is not specifically for the purpose of satisfying sexual desires, sexual drives are to be satisfied only in marriage. It is only in marriage that we are permitted Hallelujah. To have sexual relationships. Praise the Lord. So anything, any sexual relationship outside marriage or even before marriage is sin in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. And that is why the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9b. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9b. It says, but... 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9b says, Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or infeminate, nor abusers of themselves, with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. I take it, you say, 
the, the B parts. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9b. He says, do not be deceived. Don't let anyone deceive you. To say that, oh, you are a beautiful girl. You are a handsome man. Sleep with her before you marry her. Try and see if she will get pregnant before you marry her. No. He says, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the word fornication comes from the word ponia. And the word ponia means or refers to all sexual sin. The word ponia refers to all sexual sin. And that is where the word pon emanated or originated from. Fornication in the Greek word is ponia. And that is where the word pon emanated from or originated from. So fornication in the eyes of God is, is, is a kind of sin that God hates. It is, in, it is in the category of adultery, covetousness, thieves, drunkenness, and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. And so as children of God believers, we must begin to know what it means to marry and what it entails to marry. Praise the Lord. Because marriage is not, as I have said, a man-made institution. It is a God-ordained institution. And you and I must not treat it as the world treats it. Praise the Lord. Now, marriage must begin from somewhere. It must start from somewhere. And the first step to marriage is courtship. Just say courtship. Oh, say courtship. And I put it Christian courtship. That's how I put it. Because the courtship of the world is different from the courtship, the courtship of the Christian or the believer. Hallelujah. Oh, are you here today? The courtship, the definition of the world concerning courtship is different from the definition of the Christian. Hallelujah. Now, the first step to courtship Courtship is the first step, sorry, towards marriage. Courtship must be the first step towards marriage. Say the first step. Oh, say the first step towards marriage. Hallelujah. Courtship is the first step towards marriage. And the couple must both be believers. The man, the woman must both be believers. Hallelujah. Because to court an unbeliever is to court trouble and not a husband or a wife. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What friendship has a believer with an unbeliever? Praise the Lord. So the first step towards um, um, marriage is courtship. And the couple, the man and the woman, must both be believers. Don't say, say, oh, this gentleman, the way he looks handsome, the way he drives his own car, if I'm able to marry him, then I will win him into the kingdom. No, don't make that mistake. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Hallelujah. But by the outward appearance, by the physical appearance, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many have been deceived into this, you know, temptations and have found themselves in one trouble or the other. Hallelujah. You must both be believers. And that is why it is important that as a matter of fact, it is, if it is possible with you, marry in the church, marry someone who is a Christian, who is a faithful believer, who is obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Clap your hand for Jesus. Now, the two must be ready to marry so that the period of courtship 
will preferably not exceed six months to one year. Hallelujah. Both must be ready. You must be ready. Say, I am ready. <laughs> Say, I must be ready. Hallelujah. There are some who enter into courtship when they are not ready. But before you enter into courtship, you must be ready to marry. Praise the Lord. You must be ready. You must prepare yourself. You must know that now I am ready to marry. Hallelujah. Because anything that you enter into without preparation is bound to fail. Lack of preparation brings failure. Hallelujah. So you must be ready. You must be prepared before you enter into that courtship. Amen. Hallelujah. And the courtship must not exceed one year. There are some who have courted for years. If you cry to me to come that brochure for 10 years, no, about to Ghana, huh? waiting for the man to come before they marry. And when you ask, oh, my fiancé is in the United States. My fiancé is in the United Kingdom. And you ask her, how, for, for how long have you been courting? You say, 10 years. 10 years? And he's in the United States and you are here waiting for him? Praise the Lord. If you are re really ready to marry, and you begin to prepare church, it must not exceed one year. You must do everything within your limited power with the help of God to ensure that you marry within that specific period. Praise the Lord. By doing so, it helps you to overcome sexual desires. Praise the Lord. It helps you to overcome the temptations of the lust of the flesh. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. So church, don't enter into caution for five years, six years, ten years. You'll be tempted. You'll be tempted. Amen. You'll be tempted. And if you are not strong in the faith, if you are not grounded in the word of God, the devil may may succeed and that can block a whole lot of things in your life hallelujah but as a child of god don't think about the 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 the, the pomposity the 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 how do i put it the, the 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 elegance of the wedding we'll come to that but you know prepare according to your means Prepare according to your means. Don't look at what somebody did some years ago and say, oh, I want my wedding gown to come from the United Kingdom. I want my wedding gown to be bought with pounds telling before you have your wedding. No. Hallelujah. Prepare within your means. Save money. Keep money. When you're preparing for money, that is not when you buy earrings for 500 Ghana CDs. That is not when you go and buy shoes for 10,000 Ghana CDs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Yes. Clap your hand for Jesus. There are many courting and are believing God for marriage. But you see them holding, you know, well, I don't know their financial capacity. But you see them holding iPhone 12, they are being pro, and I'm a boy, which is about 3,000, 4,000 Ghana CDs. And that alone can, you know, organize a whole wedding complete wedding for you praise god am i talking to somebody here today a word to the wise oh a word to the wise clap your hand for jesus now at the start of courtship as uh, at the start of courtship we as a church first century apostolic insist that the couple must introduce themselves to their pastor who will make their courtship public by announcing it in the church hallelujah you must an, you must announce to the servant of god that i brother Kwesi, i brother ato i brother uh, daniel i'm courting this sister you don't hide it don't keep it a secret praise the lord 
because it helps you when you make it known to your pastors your our general overseer or your branch pastors it is very important because by so doing we help you in prayers we support you in prayers because marriage is one thing that the devil opposes the devil doesn't like that institution of god at all because the devil knows that out of marriage comes god's prophets evangelists pastors apostles and teachers and so the devil will do everything to stop marriages from coming to pass so when you tell your pastor it doesn't mean your pastor is going to intrude or become busybody in your affairs no it helps your pastor to also remember you in prayers so that anything in the realm of the spirit that will try to be a stumbling block for your marriage will be dealt with according to the word of god so that you have a perfect loving marriage praise the lord hallelujah the bible says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much and we know we are righteous in this church and therefore god hears our prayers god hears the prayer of his servant so when you tell him and you go he goes into prayer with you church god hears and clears the way for your successful marriage <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord because i know that anytime you tell daddy about courting he tells we the you know the associate pastors and we also remember you in our prayers because we we become encouraged inspired when we see god's children coming before the altar and exchanging the marriage vows hallelujah it it, it encourages us it inspires us it gives us the the the, the, the ability to persevere to do more for the kingdom of god hallelujah Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here today? Clap your hand for Jesus. <laughs> Number two, to support. To support you. To support you. Maybe financially. Um, socially or whatever. We support you. When you announce your courtship to your pastor, number one, we pray for you. And we also support you. Hallelujah both sometimes in cash and in kind the church supports you individuals support you pastors support you elders support you your department supports you hallelujah praise the lord so we all put our hands together to ensure that your marriage comes to pass to the glory of god we also support you in counseling protection and so many other things hallelujah because when you when we get to know that you are caught in and somebody from somewhere you know come and begin to hold my sister emmanuela i i, I have the right to tell that gentleman my brother this place is a no-go area hallelujah my sister is caught in and preparing for marriage so you have no right to put your hand around her neck you are trespassing Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I see a young lady trying to mesmerize one of our young brothers who may be caught in, I have the right to tell that lady, that lady, I beg you, this one has been chosen already. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Clap your hand for Jesus. For counseling, we advise you. We advise you. We guide you. We direct you as to how to go about your 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 courtship your preparation and other things hallelujah and we also protect you we protect you clap your hand for jesus now courtship must culminate into marriage must come to the point of marriage courtship must come to the point of marriage to give honor to god to edify the church and prevent emotional trauma to the couple hallelujah marriage must culminate in sorry courtship must culminate in marriage or into marriage 
number one to honor god when you marry you honor god you give glory to god it means you have allowed yourself for god to 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 look after you until that point of marriage hallelujah you have submitted yourself under the mighty hand of god it means you have obeyed the word of god to the latter praise god it means you have given reverence to the word of god oh am i talking to somebody here today so it honors god it glorifies god it 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 it, it beautifies it makes heaven rejoices hallelujah when you come and stand here to pronounce the marriage of our church don't say it as you only or you alone remember that you are standing before the altar of god to honor first of all the most high god praise the lord and may your marriage honor god oh i didn't hear your amen may your marriage give glory to the name of the lord clap your hand for jesus when we come and celebrate with you it is in the same way heaven also rejoices so as we are dancing and celebrating and shouting heaven also celebrates and rejoices with you am i talking to somebody here and that is why it is important as a youth as a young sister young brother wait patiently for that appointed time don't be don't be in a haste don't allow that young man to deceive you. Don't allow that young woman to deceive you. Wait patiently for that day. Hallelujah. And when that day comes, church, no demon, no witch, no wizard can stop it from happening. That is what I always tell my brothers at Michelle Kam. That wait patiently for the Lord. Humble yourself. Pray, come to church, commit yourself to the things of God. Whatever the Lord has said concerning your life, church, it will surely come to pass. Because he is not a man that will lie, nor a son of man that repents from what he has said. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, am I talking to somebody? Yes. Don't allow what you will eat to drag you to sexual immorality. We beg you. Don't allow what you will wear to drag you to sexual promiscuity. No. As a child of God, as a believer, wait. Be like Joseph. Flee. Run away when you see that temptation coming. And God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. So it honors in the name of God and it edifies the church. It exalts the church. A shell crow from crying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It edifies the church. When a sister is, is sitting down watching your wedding, you know, ceremony, that sister will also be encouraged that if the sister has come before the altar, then I know surely that God will bring mine also to pass. Oh, I didn't hear your amen. amen. Praise the Lord. If this sister was able to wait patiently for God for this day, then I will also wait patiently for God to bring my day to pass. Amen. amen. So it edifies. It encourages the pastors, the leaders, and the church. Amen. amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Say, I will wait patiently for my day for my appointed day in jesus name clap your hand for jesus now during the time of courtship the the couple must endeavor number one to pray more and better and be better committed to the church during the time of courtship the couple must endeavor to pray more and be better committed to the church. In your time of courtship, that is, not, that is not the time to relax. Don't say, oh, the brother has come, so now I can relax. Don't say, the sister has appeared, so now I can relax. No, that is the time to pray more. That is the time to pray harder. That is the time to be more committed to the things of God. 
Because church, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are dealing with spiritual beings, disembodied spirit, demons that can see but have no bodies. Can you imagine? Demons that can see but has no, have no bodies. They are the witches and wizards we are dealing with. And for you as a human being to overcome them, you need a higher power. You need a higher authority from heaven to be able to conquer, to quench, and to destroy all their fairy darts. Praise the Lord. So during courtship church, that is the time to pray. When it is prayer time, come and pray. When it is Bible study, come. Involve yourself. Participate in the things of the church. Because the more you pray, the more spiritual you become. And the more spiritual you become, the more you are able to overcome every temptation that comes your way. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus said, if you don't pray, then you expose yourself to temptation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the more you pray, the more you become connected to the Holy Spirit. And the more you become connected, the more you are able to overcome the desires of the flesh. You become more spiritual. You begin to think spiritual things than physical things. And that helps you to override, overrule, and overcome the forces of darkness. Praise the Lord. Say, I will pray. Say, I will be committed to the things of God. Even in my courtship. That is not the time to relax. Don't relax. Prayer makes you more effective. It sharpens you. Hallelujah. It empowers you. It enlightens you. Prayer that is based on the word of God enlightens you. It, it brings divine revelation. It gives you spiritual advantage over your enemies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Clap your hand for Jesus. Say, I will be committed. Oh, am I talking to somebody here today? It is very important. Very, very important. Sometimes you see brothers, you know, brothers and sisters, they court, you know, moving on nicely. And before you know, the courtship has become something. It has become something. And sometimes it is due to lack of prayer and commitment to church activities. Hallelujah. You see them moving on nicely, perfectly, wonderfully. And before you realize, the courtship has come down, you know, has come crashing down. May it never be so in this church. Oh, may it never be so in FCAC. May every courtship in this church lead to marriage oh i didn't hear you may every courtship in fcac whether tema branch teshi branch michelle Camp branch niboy town branch suedro branch come to the point of marriage to the glory of the father in jesus name clap your hand for jesus and that is why it is important to court a believer. Because an unbeliever, when you court an unbeliever, he doesn't find prayer you know, as something important. He doesn't find prayer as something important. Yeah, Pesca, I will say prayer. We are enjoying our, you say, prayer. But a spiritual being, a, a, a Christian, a Christian knows the importance of prayer. And therefore, will always make sure that the spirits, the, the demons in the realm of the spirit are dealt with so that that marriage will come on. May your marriage come on within the next week. Oh, may your marriage come on within the next coming week in the mighty name of Jesus. And I prophesy over your life that your marriage will come to pass to the glory of God. No witch, no wizard, no principality shall be able to withstand your marriage in Jesus' name. Because that is the will of God for your life. Amen. Amen. Michelle can receive your marriage. Neighbor Town, receive your marriage. Tema Branch, receive your marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Now, get to know each other. During the time of courtship, get to know each other better or very well. Amen. Get to know each other very well. Good habits are reinforced and bad ones are discarded. Amen. During courtship, good habits are to be reinforced. Don't say, I am waiting after marriage, then I will show him my real character. That is not the mind of a Christian. Amen. Let every habit, bad habit, be discarded and reinforce the good habits. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Mausuba pano enye den en de di. Nasuba boni biara ufi se enye no. Tokene. Men kase me bre me huwa siya mana warimi yi no. O warimi yi ya. Machiano my real me no. That is not the mind of a believer. Amen. Discard. Do away with every bad habit. If you are a gossiper, do away with it. Amen. If you are a foodian, <laughs> hallelujah, do away with it. Anything you know is a bad habit in your life, do away with it and reinforce the bad one, the, the good ones. Amen. Open tokwa, tokini. Amen. Opa temudidia, tokini. Uyobia ubufu by hata, tokini. Amen. Now be kind, be polite, be gentle, be disciplined, be self-disciplined. Oh, am I talking to somebody here today? Yes, get to know, you know each other very well. Don't hide things. Don't be secretive. Be open, be transparent. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. By so doing, the person will know that this is the right person that God has ordained for me to marry. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Now prepare financially, prepare financially and materially towards your marriage. Prepare financially and materially towards your marriage. And care must be taken not to aim beyond your means. That is, cut your coat according to what? Oh, cut your coat according to what? Yes, cut your coat according to your size. As I said earlier on, that is not the time when you are preparing for marriage. That is not when to buy, the time to buy iPhone 11, iPhone 12 Pro. 33,000 Ghana City, 5,000 Ghana. Hey, I went to Francophone the last time to find out, you know, the latest phone in town. And some, you know, cost as much as 7,000 Ghana CDs. And I said, wow. Praise the Lord. That is a whole land in your pockets. A whole land. <laughs> a whole land. 7,000 Ghana CDs. A whole plot of land. And somebody will buy it and put it in his pockets. Amen. But as a child of God, when God has blessed you and for your business sake, you think you have to get that phone to, you know, enhance, propagate your business, fine. But as a beginner, you are preparing for marriage and you are going to buy 7,000 worth of iPhone 12 Pro. Amen. Cut your coat according to your size. Papa has said over and over again that even right now, if you want to marry, you can lift up your two hands and we will officiate your wedding for you. Amen. All you need is a Bible and a ring. And a small, you know, Android phone and you me picture pictures. That is all. That is all you need. Praise the Lord. It is we human beings that have, you know, made marriage so, you know, burdensome for us. But the most important thing is that you are married, and that is it. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. I remember when I married my wife, the coat I bought, 
It was a uh, friend is saying, bend down, bend down, bend down, top and down. But it took it to the laundry, you know, they stretched it, ironed it nicely. And nobody even knew that that, food, that you know, coat was a bend down coat. Praise the Lord. So I bought about 15 or 25 CDs. Hallelujah. And my wife's wedding gown was not more than 200 Ghana CDs. Praise the Lord. And it was, it was beautiful. Beautiful. It, it became a talk of the town, you know, in that whole area. Praise God. It is the marriage that is important to God. Not the expenses. Hallelujah. Not the expenses. Clap your hand for Jesus. I think our time is fast approaching. Oh, are, are we talking to somebody here today? Let your marriage be simple. Because somebody did his or hers that way, I must also do my this or that way. No. We beg you. Amen. The most important thing is that you are married. And God's name is glorified. The church is edified. And you are delivered from that emotional trauma. Amen. So, it's their own business. And I'm a boy. Yes. Let the gossipers, you know, go and gossip. But as for you, you have married. And that is, most, that is the most important. That is the most important. Clap your hand for Jesus. Oh, money may have been pa. Oh, money are sure pa. Say, pastor, pastor, oh, you're correct in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the fact of life, church. That is the fact of life. Make things simple. Simple. Amen. Now, get to know your respective families and hometowns. As part of getting to know yourself very, yourselves very well, get to know your respective families and hometown. Amen. Don't hide your parents from your, your, your fiancé. Don't say, my parents are living in, in a kiosk, so I can't take him or, or her there. No. After all, did you choose your parents by yourself? Oh, did you choose them by yourself? No. Hallelujah. There are some who are ashamed to take their partners to their mother's home or family house or whatever, to their hometown. Because some come from Kumasi, some come from, you know, notable uh, regions and notable families. So they feel shy to take, you know, um, the partner to their house. And it's not, it's not proper. Church, your family is what God has given you. Praise the Lord. I have said it over and over again that in my family, before I became born again, no BAC died. No BAC died. None tabo dining. But today, by the grace of God, hallelujah, things have changed. Amen. Things have changed. And I took my wife there. She saw where my mother lived. And she was happy. But within a twinkle of an eye, God has changed that place to a a more befitting place to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So don't be ashamed. Be open. Be transparent. Amen. And God will bless you. Clap your hand for Jesus. Clap your hand for Jesus. And then I think finally, finally, seek medical seek medical treatment for any existing medical condition. Seek medical treatment for any existing medical condition. If you have any, you know, sickness, don't feel ashamed to disclose it. Don't feel ashamed. Don't marry. After then you tell your partner, oh, I have this problem, oh. I have that problem. No. Amen. Make your, med uh, your, your health condition known to each other. It will help you. 
so that you pray for each other, support each other, and God will bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Papa told us a story about a young man who married a beautiful lady. And this young man had, you know, medical problem. Had a medical problem. And he didn't disclose it, you know, to the woman. It was after the marriage. Because we know that when you marry and you go for your honeymoons, I mean, things must happen, isn't it? Yes. And the honeymoon has expired. They've gone back home. One month has expired. Two months has expired. Three months has expired. And no show. No show. And the lady became worried. Praise the Lord. The lady became worried. It was later that she got to know that the brother had a medical problem. Praise the Lord. And the sister became angry. She became angry. And they came for counseling. You know, people counsel them, talk to them. But the sister said, no. The gentleman wasn't faithful to her. So, she sought for divorce. And the marriage collapsed. Amen. Praise the Lord. May that never happen to any one of us here in FCAC. Clap your hand for Jesus. So, seek medical treatment for any existing condition. Amen. And finally, don't hide any previous relationships such as unsuccessful courtship in the past, previous marriages and partners, children, and financial assets or debts. Amen. Don't hide any previous relationships. If you had a relationship before, make it known. Voice it out. Tell your partner that I used to do this or have this children, have one child, two children, three children. If you have assets, make it known, don't hide it. Cars, lands, mansions, make it known. Amen. Don't say, oh, this one, this ones were acquired by myself. So, I don't need to tell him or tell her. No. Be open. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. And God will bless you. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. So now, as part of the conclusion, courtship it's not marriage. We must know that courtship is not marriage yet. Courtship is not marriage yet. And therefore, the couple must not live together. Engage in sex or fornication. Give feeding money or chop money. Cook or wash for the partner regularly. Amen. Marriage is not, sorry, courtship is not marriage yet. You must know this, that courtship is not marriage yet. And therefore, the couple must not live together. Must not live together. Don't say, oh, we are about to marry, so I can go and stay with him in his room. No. Don't engage in sex. Don't say, oh, I want to test and see if he will get, she will get pregnant before I marry her. When you do that, you have fornicated. You have violated the commandment of God. Amen. And don't give feeding or chop money. Don't, don't call the partner and say, Oh, I need my chop money. Amen. You can support each other once in a while, but don't let it become a regular, you know, attitude. That you wake up in the morning, call and say, Mumu me. My chop money. I am waiting for my chop money. No. Don't cook or wash for the partner. Don't go and stay with a man and say, oh, I'm going to wash his clothes. I'm going to cook for him. No. No. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even if you have to go, go with a friend, go with a brother, go with a sister. And do things, you know, at the full glare of the public. Not in the secret of that room. 
Praise the Lord. Do everything openly. Don't look here and look here and enter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Clap your hand for Jesus. But do things in the open. Amen. And when you do that, um, God will bless you. Clap your hand for Jesus. I think we will end here. The rest, maybe daddy will continue. Maybe from next week. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. But yet, have we received something? Oh, have you learned something? Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Sometimes it, 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 it becomes painful that after all the all night, the fasting, the, 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 the prayer meetings, then you hear that the sister has taken, you know, has become pregnant out of wedlock. Sometimes it, it pains us. A shiakuma. Amen. A banana now say, A human in your eye, a yen, a year human. Praise the Lord. May it never be so in FCAC. Church, may it never be so in FCAC. In the name of Jesus. May we all wait patiently for that day because it will surely, surely come. It will over you. Amen. I say it will over you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be on our feet. Oh, you are clapping for Jesus and not for him. The clapping is for Jesus. The clapping is for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord.